My name is uh, Eric Fields. I'm a senior from Arizona State University. Just want to start off by uh, saying that I'm really honored to be here today. We got a lot of really talented seniors uh, in our class. Could have very uh, easily been anyone else up here, and uh, it's, it's quite an honor to represent them. So what I want to talk about today is I have multiple personalities. Uh, not in the sense that I'm too crazy, but in the sense that having multiple personalities can help us in design as we can be empathet uh, empathetic in, in design and just really use the, the sense of empathy when we're uh, designing things for other people and just really looking through, through, their, through their eyes on how a product should be designed. And I, I want to kind of use this notion of uh, empathy um, and multiple personalities to go through some of my projects. So the first project here is uh, called Loom. It's a portable UV sterilizer. And I became a mother and an infant. Who would have thought? So portable UV sterilizer. Uh, so part of the problem is when you have a product that doesn't quite exist on the market right now is that you, you have sort of issues of, of the understanding of the product and, and how it's used. So really you have to tap into to the user's mindset on, on what that product does and how it functions to uh, create a good design for it. So you can see here how it's used. It opens up and you insert a pacifier into it and it closes and you see that, that it lights up to, to let the user know that it's working. And so the two key things out of that is that the, the cap doesn't come off all the way and part of the reason is that for that is that the Consumer Product Safety Commission has a gauge by which they uh, kind of set as a standard for what's safe around having around young children. Um, and then the pulsating light to let the user know that the product is working successfully. So this is my kind of exploded view of this product and all the components that go into making it work. So kind of going through some of the uh, assembly of it, a lot of these slides just kind of detail on how these parts interact and how they really come together to create a mechanically and techn technically sound uh, product. So for this next project, I became a woodworker or a skilled craftsman. <laughs> and it's a power tool redesign project. Uh, I chose uh, a wood router, and my redesign is a pneumatic wood router. So this kind of taking a look at existing routers, uh, you can see it's a lot different. Uh, there is a, a research phase in the beginning of the project where we're really doing a lot of primary research, talking to professionals, um, observing people uh, use the product. I even went out and bought one, used it myself, watched other people use it, and just really used um, the, that, those methods to identify like, what really are, are the key issues with this product and uh, what can be a, addressed in a redesign. So these are the key issues um, that I found with the product. And a, a, a glimpse at the, at the final design of it, you can see it's a lot different. I felt that all those issues were better addressed with a completely different with a completely different form. There were so many issues with it that I had to start somewhere else. And uh, this, so this lateral form as opposed to a vertical orientation kind of opened up uh, the room for more design opportunities. We did some reverse engineering in the, also in the beginning part of the project where we were uh, taking apart power tools, uh, figuring out the inner components. And so this is kind of a conceptual configuration that would work with uh, my design that allows um, a little bit more ability with the router. Uh, also with it, I wanted to include a, um, a touch point color across the product to signal to the user of, of parts where they should interact with the product. So this is uh, kind of has two purposes. One for the, for the sense of, of safety on uh, power tools can be dangerous, and also to create a sense of familiarity of, of where they should uh, touch the product at. So one of the uh, first innovations with this redesign was in this whole plunge function that routers have, and just really utilizing the pneumatic motor to uh, channel air into these chambers and the handles that can lock the, the bit at a desired depth. And also a, a screen displaying that depth so you can get a more accurate cut. So the second innovation is allowing uh, the user to change bits more easily with the existing routers. You gotta turn it on its side um, to change out the bits and the redesign, you can rotate this call system around to uh, more accurately align the bit, as well as including storage for bits and the tools that you would be using. So the last uh, product that I want to go through here is uh, in my senior year. Uh, this is the, actually the first semester's work of it. I'm in a 
program called uh, Innovation Space through Arizona State. And this is a, a transdisciplinary product development program where they take uh, nine students out of the industrial design program, nine marketing students, nine mechanical engineers, and nine graphic designers, and we all work together to, to um, develop a product. And they're, they're sponsored projects, and my sponsor was Herman Miller. So this is kind of the core, uh, this is kind of the core of innovation space is this, this model of innovation where we're really trying to, since we have a transdisciplinary team, we're really trying to go beyond just user needs uh, that should be considered in a design, but also, uh, you know, what's, what's valuable and desirable for businesses and what's possible through engineering, and really comparing kind of those four values together to uh, develop a more thorough product. So our, our project that we took on was dealing with uh, issues of, of patient transfer in healthcare, and so our uh, so basically in the beginning we did a lot of primary research, a lot of observing users, um, talking to professionals. In the second phase, we took all that data, we organized it, we made it make sense. Third phase, we did some really hardcore brainstorming with a lot of uh, outside professionals, medical experts that gave us insights on uh, what's ethical in medical practices, and we narrowed about 50 ideas into three concepts. So the first concept, dealing primarily with emergency situations and transfers. The second concept, dealing with not moving patients, but their equipment that's attached to them. And the third, minimizing the injury of risk uh, with patient transfers. So this first one uh, became paramedic, an injured patient. This is an inflatable backboard. And you can see here how it functions to open and secure a patient. So the purpose of this is to stabilize their injuries, uh, compressing the body, uh, helps stabilize the spine. We're running out of time here, go through these quick. So this is the second concept, taking on more characters again, uh, just really redoing re the IV pole completely as there's a ton of issues with it in patient transfers. And so this uh, basically takes the IV pole out and puts in a new system that allows patients and transporters to be more uh, mobile. And the third, we get through this quick, this is a project that I continued with my senior year. This is a dual access hoist system and essentially allows uh, trans transporters to move patients anywhere within a room um, very safely uh, without taking up extra space in the room, as you can see here. Uh, so this is the, the project that I stuck with and it's very, very different now. It's evolved, it's the same idea and uh, it's really exciting. We got a week left in the semester and we got a business plan for it as well as a branding strategy and got a really thorough design for it and you're graduating in a week. So thank you.